Hello everyone, it's Old Guardian here. Hearthstone's Descent of Dragons expansion is rapidly approaching and in this video I want to take a look at Highlander Dragon Warlock. I think it's a fairly interesting archetype. It's an archetype that I already attempted to play on ladder and I actually had relatively nice success with that, but that was a Nessot deck. Because right now one of the main problems with this slow Warlock decks is healing. How do you heal yourself up? Because you're taking tons and tons of damage, also from your own cards, and then somehow you need to regain that health or you're just being bursted down. And that is one of my main concerns also for the upcoming Highlander Control Warlock. Because with Nesot gone, that means that the healing options are further diminished. And I'm not sure where the right balance for healing lies with this archetype. That's typically one of the most difficult things when you're building a Warlock deck. You have to find just the right balance, put just enough healing cards in it in order to succeed. And in this build that I made, well, Nether Breath, obviously. If you're holding a dragon, deal 4 damage with lifesteal. So that's a great spell, it's a healing spell. I'm still running card with defender in this one because I really think I'm going to need that healing. And obviously Zepris can give some healing, so that can sometimes help. Alex Traza can potentially be also used to heal yourself, and it can be used to provide lethal. And there is some, some healing in like Siphon Soul, but healing can be a problem. So that's one of the issues facing the archetype. Another is what is going to be your win condition. And there are lots of expensive cards that you would really like to include in the deck. Because there's Lord Godfrey, Valdris Felgorge, Twisting Nether, Seracot the Warped, Mountain Giants, Dragon Queen Alexstrasza, Regular Alexstrasza, Siamat, Crowd Roaster. This is already quite full of expensive cards, and I'm slightly worried about that one too. And this is even without Satravar, although I would really love to put Satravar in this deck, because then you could do Valdris Felgorge to get your hand size to 12, then you can discount your Mountain Giant to 1, then you can play Mountain Giant into Satravar, which is just beautiful. But I'm running out of space of, for expensive cards, so I don't know what to do about that. I don't really want to cut any of these cards. In most decks I might consider cutting Alex Traza. But even getting back to that 15 might be so important for Warlock that I'm extremely hesitant to do that. This is currently an 8 dragon build, so in theory one dragon could be cut and there might still be some success to be had. Although there are a couple of dragon synergy cards, Fighter Witch, Doctor, Netherbreath that are already available on turn 2, so then 8 dragons kind of makes sense. I could cut maybe something from the earlier game like Fritz, Kindle, Roost. Which is really an experimental card in this deck, because this is not such a heavy dragon deck, so I'm not sure how useful it is, but it does have a good stat line, so you're not paying anything extra for the effect, so it looks very powerful overall. But it might not be completely essential, same with Volpera Scoundrel, but cutting these cheaper cards is problematic, because you need things that you're able to do early in the game. But overall, I envision Highlander Dragon Warlock to look something like this. So there's the Mountain Giant, uh, the attack, the Zerako the Warped is a win condition, just stuff that you get from Dragon Queen Alexstrasza is a win condition. Overall, just having those dragons, maybe having them early even with Frizz, Zepris is a win condition, resource generation, Witch Doctor, Brightwing, Volpara Scoundrel, that can help you win games. So overall, I think this kind of archetype looks really fun to play. There's just so many things that you can do. You just need to find the right balance between those win conditions, the mana costs, how many expensive cards you can run, how much early game you need to run. Do you need stuff like Volpera? Do you need stuff like Frizz? Do you need some tech cards? Does the upcoming meta require silence or mind control tech, for example? And when all of that comes together when you see what the meta is like and you're able to fine-tune the mana curve and the deck card choices, then I think this will be a fairly fun archetype to play in Descent of Dragons. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel for more.